Fear stops us from achieving our true greatness. Are you a professional woman who is feeling stuck, unmotivated, or burned out? Are you worried about your wellness? Are you letting fear stop you from crushing your goals? If you answered yes to any or all of these, then this is the podcast for you. Dr. Charmaine Gregory, Night Shift Emergency Physician, Burnout Thriver, and Wellness Champion, along with everyday heroes just like you, will explore how to face fear in our lives and emerge victoriously. Hey, thanks for checking out this episode. Be sure to click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get notified when the next video comes out. It only takes two seconds to make two clicks. So let's do it. Let's get back to the video. Hello, 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 Fearless Freedom Tribe. Welcome to another amazing week on the Fearless Freedom with Dr. G podcast. And this week we have the absolute pleasure of having Debbie Godfrey with us. She is going to tell you all about who she is and what she is up to. Take it away. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you, Dr. G. Uh, but yes, my name is Debbie Godfrey, and I am a parent educator. I teach parents what to do instead of yelling at their kids. <laughs> oh, that's and, good. Um, <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> so I started my business uh, almost 30 years ago and definitely went through a lot of different transitions, and, um, and I'm still here and still doing it. So uh, it's very very great work. I, I, it's um, my life's work and I'm very grateful to, to have it. And I wouldn't, if there wasn't parents out there that needed help. So <laughs> exactly, like, exactly. So now um, how does it work? Do you, how do you find parents to educate? Well, initially a long time ago, this is, I mean, I, when I started internet was not a big thing yet. So I did what I called pounding the pavement. I would go to schools in different places and find places to teach. And then I would print out flyers and I'd pound the pavement. I'd walk, go to doctor's offices and schools and give out flyers. And I would print a newsletter. I used to print 3000 newsletters every month. And sometimes every quarter I shifted to that and my kids would help me label them and fold them. And um, yeah, that was all before internet. So internet came along and so things change very rapidly with the internet. I would say right around 2000 is when all these rapid changes started happening. About 2005, I started teaching via the phone. So instead of going to classrooms, I would do teleclasses. So that opened up um, having more people having access. While I did travel to go teach, I I worked in India for a month teaching and I worked in China for a couple of weeks. uh, And I've traveled, you know, around the States with doing in teleclasses and now zoom classes, obviously I have parents from all over the world and it's it's great. Fabulous. Yeah. 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 That's great. And then, so, um, so you initially started out with, um, pounding the pavement, pounding the pavement. I can't even Mm -hmm. speak pounding the pavement and then, um, doing classes and then evolving to teleclasses. And then, you know, you had, a you had quite a period there where you were traveling, internationally to present your work, which is awesome. Right. Um, so what, what are you doing now? Like, how are you getting the word out now? Well, now the pandemic actually, I know for a lot of people, it made things hard and I had all of my work cancel. I was set up to go to New York and Chicago and I had classes in different places. Everything got canceled with the pandemic. And So I was like, well, what am I going to do? And my best friend called me up and she's like, you have to teach parenting classes. People need you because, you know, everybody's now home with their kids and trying to, and I'm like, I, that's too much work. It's too hard. I'm, you know, cause I uh, no. And she's like, uh, and she kept convincing me I needed to do this. And so I said, okay, if you do it with me. So she was my, uh, she calls it herself my wacky wingman, but I think she's like the whole reason I was able to do it. She would help with the Zoom, uh, moder- moderate the chat, answer people's questions so I could just teach. And what I did was I taught a free class every day from 2 to 2.30 Eastern time on Zoom. And from April 3rd of when the pandemic started till I think I stopped the end of August, beginning of September. Okay. Every day we showed up and taught parenting and I ended up getting around 80 people a day. And so awesome. all over the world, yeah, we had 20 
26 countries represented by wow. the end of the day, we were keeping track. I mean, there was moms up. It was so sweet. There was a mom up in India at midnight every night to be on. Well, live of course, because it's like the time difference. I know mm-hmm. all about that. <laughs> Where are you? I'm in Guam. So it's like a 14 oh, hour so time difference. Yes. So now I know about those meetings that are like, you know, in the afternoon and I'm up at like 3 a.m. to attend meetings. Yeah. So I, I hear her. I mean, she's like, she's like, look, this is important. I'm going to I'm going to stay up and do this thing. Yeah. Wow. No, that's great. That speaks to the quality of the content. Right. Because, you know, to get me to stay up, it has to be a good meeting. Like, it has to be something that I'm like, OK, this is going to be of impact. This is going to be something of value. So clearly she thought it was something of value. Right. And that, yes. that speaks to your content. So no, fantastic. That's great. Yeah. So now what I've been doing is the contacts I've made through doing that because I, you know, those were free and I did have, um, sold, sold the recordings. And then I, you know, cause I do classes that are a curriculum. It's 15 hours. And so what I did was I taught that free if you come live, but then people could pay to get the recordings if they couldn't attend live. So I did make some money during the pandemic. Thank goodness. Good, (laughs) good. But I couldn't do that forever with that small pace. Sure. Um, So now what I'm doing is I'm back to teaching for schools again, which is great because they're all, they've all converted to zoom. So instead of traveling around the country, like I did, which I actually love doing, but now their budgets are all set up and they hire yeah. me to teach on zoom, their parent education class classes, whatever they need. And so I get around a lot more now because I'm not having to physically travel everywhere. Right, right, right. Now that's good. You know, there, there is something to be said for sure on being in a room live with your audience, right? There's, there's like, there is something like magical about that. There's and nothing that replaces it. It doesn't. Yeah, you're absolutely right. There's absolutely nothing that replaces the live, the live show. Right. <laughs> but but, you know, I have to say that and you said this and I think it's such a great point is that, you know, there are there were a lot of things that came out of the of our experience. I mean, we're still in it, but like, you know, hopefully we're at a tail end, you know, out of our experience with this. Right. And it is that we learn how to reinvent ourselves. We learn how to pivot. And you have done so quite beautifully. And kudos to your friend. Oh, my God, what an ace. <laughs> she kudos is. to her because I she, can't like, her. <laughs> she was just like, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah, my sister. We will not be sitting down during this. We will be evolving. <laughs> We will, we will get to the people. Like she was all about it. She was just like, look, we're going to get, where are they? We'll get to them. Like they're in India. Okay. Let's get to them, you know? (laughs) And so, you know, kudos to her. That's a true ace. And, you know, it's, 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 it's amazing how now, you know, the fruit of that, you know, you're like, you're, you're harvesting, you know, all of those seeds sown now, because now you're able to, you know, not necessarily be there live, but you're able to like reach more people as a consequence yeah. of that. That's and and that really is the payoff. And yes, there's nothing like being in a room. There's especially with my work, people go deep a lot of times, and to be able to give somebody a hug is super important. And I do my best trying to reach through the Zoom screen. Sure, sure, <laughs> sure. Was, I mean, with everything that I have, I every intention of my being hugs people through the zoom. Um, and you know, there's nothing like truly like, uh, you know, a hug and being there to, to in, in person with people. And I mean, I can't, I, I can, could not physically reach as many people if I had right. to travel room to room to room. So this is a way that I can, I can reach a lot more people. It's almost like you're, it's almost like multiplicity, right? Like you're, uh, you're cloning yourself, which was impossible before. So, or actually that it wasn't possible. People weren't like as, um, amenable to zoom as they are now. Now they're just like, oh, that's nothing like, yeah, that's like a phone call. You know, it's like nothing, not a big deal for people to, to just get on a zoom call. Like, oh, let's get on a zoom call. Okay. 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like was be- a- before it was a, a little bit of a people were like, I don't know, I don't have Zoom or whatever, but everybody's got Zoom now or everybody's got something, right, right. that they can do a video call on. So so that has yeah, that prior, has been pri- a change in the world. <laughs> yeah. Prior to this, there's no way a school would have paid me my speaking fee to teach right. on Zoom. They would be like, right. you're crazy. <laughs> like, why aren't you coming body? here? Come on, right. lady. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they they do, they do it now and they don't blink. And it's, it, it, everybody's just like exactly what you said. Everybody has shifted into this and for, for good or bad. And, right, you know, right. it is what it is. It's, I think it's, I think it is reaching more people and that touch piece will come back. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm never going to mm-hmm. stop teaching people in person because I love teaching in person and it'll come back and whatever it looks like, it'll look like, and we'll figure it out as we get there. That's right. That's right. That's right. A beautiful thing about that. And then, so you had to, okay. So you, you, your ace came in and she like totally <laughs> like, you know, push you to like think outside the box. But before that you had to have some fear because I'll tell you that like, I literally launched my public speaking career like one year before. So like I launched it in the beginning of 2019. I had a bunch of, you know, engagements that I did. And then I had some engage, and I was like getting my engagements all set for 2020. And I literally did the last engagement I did was in February. And right as soon as I got back from that engagement was when we had lockdown. <laughs> So I was like, okay, I guess none of these are going to be panning out for the rest of the year. And so, you know, I know for me, it was like, whoa, this is different. Now I have to reinvent myself yet again and figure out what I'm going to do. And so I know, and, and, and my speaking engagements were not like the, the sole income stream for me. Right. Because obviously I'm still working full time as a physician, but um, it was definitely a growing income stream. And then to have it completely, you know, just taken away was a little rough. And there was some fear associated with that. And so I know that you had to have had some fear when everything was going down and you were just like, wait a minute, I'm not going to have any of my engagements like this is nuts. (laughs) So tell us how you dealt with that. Well, I mean, I have a lot of experience. So I, you know, I started in 1994 and that's, nice. that's when I started and, you know, positive parenting.com. That's, that was my, my URL I got in 95. So that's why I have such a good URL. Cause I got it a long that time That is a really ago. good URL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I mean, I remember one of the first classes I taught was at my dad's church and I had, he, they wanted me to go to the church on a Sunday and get up and tell the people what I was going to be teaching. And it's my church, my class is not a religious thing. I teach at temples and churches and those are just, that's just a location where I'm often teaching. And so I, I walk up and I'm so nervous. Like literally this is one of the first times I'm in front of people ever in any kind of a big group. And there was like a lot of people in this church, probably like 200. And so I'm walking you know, they say, here comes Debbie is going to tell us about what she's teaching here on Wednesday nights at the whatever church. And, and I'm walking up and I was standing there. I don't remember what I said. I could feel my legs wiggling back and forth, like shaking so bad. I came off of that and I got to the back of the room. I'm like, dad, could you see my legs shaking? And he said, no, you look like you were cool as a cucumber. Like I couldn't even tell you were nervous. And I'm like, what? I was dying. <laughs> like, I That's good. That's a good. total wreck. And, and so for me, along the way, a lot of this was getting that feedback from other people that, oh no, you talk really well. And oh no, because, because inside I had a lot of fear and my esteem was not there for, for public speaking at all. And, and so along, you know, along the way I did, I did things that I could like join toast, Toastmasters trying mm-hmm. to get, a That's more a great organization, did, by the way. Yeah, yeah, did really well with <laughs> Toastmasters, and then I also joined the National Speakers Association. Thing, same thing, but a nice. little higher level, and yeah. maintain that connection to practicing getting in front of people and and what are the things that I needed to do, so that over time my fear came less and less, 
and it would still crop up. And I, I did a lot of personal growth back in those days. I mean, I think I still do, but in a different way. Um, and I, I remember what there was some book and I think it said, feel the fear and do it anyway. And that's yes. always stuck with me. Yes. I love that book. <laughs> I love that book. Yes. That's yeah, a great so, book. And there's, and I don't know if it was that one or another one. It said fear and excitement are the same energy feeling in your body. It's just what, a matter of what you label them. Yes. And so I just, in my mind, when I'm feeling fearful for a good reason, you know, something mm-hmm. like this that I'm going to present or I, you know, have a pitch or whatever it is. I, I feel if I, if I notice myself identifying fear, I just flip it to excitement. It's like, Oh, I'm really excited to go do this because then that brings a different vibe to it. Yes. Yeah. Than yeah. saying I'm yeah. scared. I'm excited. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. I'm excited. And I have to keep telling myself that I'm excited. And I remember one time I was teaching in India and it was, this was tough work. The whole month was a, sure. a really tough gig. And I was at a school in New Delhi. It was super hot. The mm-hmm. air was broken. I'm in a school. There's 50 teachers there. Everybody's mm-hmm. sweating and miserable. Nobody wants to be learning positive discipline in the classroom right now. <laughs> Like it was a tough, tough day. And I just had this visualization. It popped in my brain. I don't know how from where, but mother and Teresa and Gandhi are both uh, mentors or not mentors, but I, um, somebody I aspire to, what do you call that? You look up to somebody like people that I really aspire to. And so as I was teaching there, I just, this visual came to my mind of like a 50 foot Gandhi and a 50 foot mother Teresa standing beside me. just like go for it. And, and that's what allowed me to show up and teach. And, and I think bringing on that, those mentors, those people, I, you know, I know um, there's, there's all kinds of, everybody has a mentor. Maybe it's Jesus. You know, a lot of people that are, I've had that one come up too, like just somebody guiding the way. And I think with my work, knowing it's not me and I have to get out of the way because really, truly, uh, parents need help. I mean, there's so many frustrating things about parenting and, and I don't want to keep myself from helping people because I'm scared. Like that would be super sad. So I just keep pushing myself out there. I know that's not me. This is work that's coming through me and just get out of the way, Deb. Just go talk, do your thing, and it's all good. Hey, it's Dr. G, and I just wanted to take a quick moment to thank you for listening to this episode. I'm so honored to have you here with me. Did you know that I can help you to get your own podcast started? With my podcasting launch course for professionals, I walk you through everything you need to know about starting a podcast. I'm with you every step of the way from sign up to launching your show with five episodes ready to go. There's a done for you version that's also available. If you would just rather just do recordings and leave the behind the scenes work up to us, then that one is definitely for you. But either way, we've got your back here at Fearless Freedom with Dr. G. Oh, if you already have a show, and you need production services, we have monthly plans available for you. So check out the links in the episode show notes for more information. Let's get back to the show. So how did you, how did you get into this? Like, so you said in 1994 was when you had your debut, but how did you get into this? Like, did you go to school for this? Did you like life experience this? Like, how did you get into this? Yeah. I mean, a little bit of everything. I was actually a biochem major. Uh, oh, so I was, was I. I uh, know. Cause I wanted to be like a vet or something. <laughs> I don't know. I love science. And, and I was in my third year at UC Santa Barbara okay. and I got pregnant with my second child and I just couldn't keep going. I quit school gotcha, gotcha. at that point. And, um, so I, I had her and then I had another one and it turns out 
uh, the husband was abusive and I ended up in a battered women's shelter. Yeah. So I had three little kids, six, two, one, I'm in a battered women's shelter. And that's where I had my first parenting class was this how this all came about. And so I, I was in there and they said, you can't spank your kids. And I'm like, well, how am I supposed to discipline then? And it wasn't like, I'm, you know, I was so young. I was 25 or something. Right. And maybe not even 20, 24. No, no, I was 25. And I, and I'm, you know, not putting to people don't put together, like you're in a domestic violence shelter, violence, mm-hmm. spanking, right? But, you know, it's like, hello, <laughs> no, we're not going to do that in the shelter. We're trying to get away from that paradigm. And so I was um, there they, we had parenting class and then they told us we're not allowed to spank our kids. And I'm like, what am I supposed to do? And one of the counselors said, if you feel like you need to spank, come and get yeah. me and we'll talk and we'll figure this out. And the first day I was okay. like, Abby, he's doing this and this and this. And I know I need to spank him now. And, and so we would talk it through. And by the end of the week, I was hardly ever going to Abby. I realized no matter what came up, I could find a better way to parent than this. I could do something better um, that makes them behave better, but also builds their self-esteem and doesn't tear it down, you know, with the the way the yank yelling and spanking did. And so when I got out of there, I started a parenting breakfast club. Okay. And I got my neighbors together. We hired Abby to come. We'd pay her, we'd each chip in five bucks and pay her to come teach us some parenting. And then a little lays down the line, I get out of that situation. I was doing volunteer work for child abuse and neglect, which was part of the domestic violence coalition. Yeah, yeah. And they said at one point, how would you like to teach parenting classes and we'll pay you? And I was like, okay, bonus. (laughs) And I, you know, I never done anything like this. They sent us out in pairs. I was uh, partnered with somebody who had no kids and we worked really well together. And I just, I I would go to schools and we would teach this curriculum that they gave us. And, and I just found, I loved the work and I was really good at it. And so then I, took another training to teach the curriculum I ended up teaching. And that's what I started my, my business with. And then subsequently, so all those years, the first six, eight years of me teaching parenting, it was what you said, practical, like I'm doing this and I'm teaching what I learned. So it was Mm -hmm, practical mm -hmm. experience and I'm, and I'm teaching hands-on, but about seven or eight years later, I went back to school and I changed my major to sociology Oh, look at that. <laughs> easy just fl- three semesters straight A's I was in and out <laughs> statistics no problem and I um and I wrote all my papers about like domestic violence and parenting about okay. um okay. the the gender of of parent people who take parenting classes because I had tons of data from all the classes that I had taught and so it was it was just super fun and I that's my kind of roundabout way of how I got here Wow. See, that story was what we had to hear. That is amazing. <laughs> that's a phenomenal backstory. Oh my God. Wow. Well, and, and so obviously your children yeah. are like grown ups and probably have their own children by now or, you know, or, you know, they're doing their thing. Yes. I have, I have three grown children and five grandchildren now. <laughs> that's amazing. That's so cool. Yeah. And so do you find that your children who have children Um, are they, do they follow the principles or do they come to you for advice or, or is it kind of like one of those things, the prophet is not heard in their own (laughs) land kind of deal? No, 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 they're absolutely amazing. Um, and so all those years of teaching them, I, of teaching parenting when I was at home, you know, when I was raising them, I followed the philosophy of we teach best that which we most need to learn. (laughs) And I always said, that's why I'm so good at this. Cause I need this. If I, if I had like three weeks between a class, I would start yelling at them. Like I needed to be teaching to keep it fresh and to keep it going. Cause I really was very remedial with the parenting initially. And so once they grew up, I thought I would quit. I thought, why do it if, you know, they, but when they grew up is when I realized like, oh my gosh, this no kidding makes a difference. Like my middle daughter, especially we, but, but it had so much, so many of the success stories I share in my classes are with her and our relationship was amazing as she became an adult and, you know, now uh, she's now married and blah, blah, blah. And so 
it's like, this makes a huge difference. So that's when I feel like I really came into my expertise with this, where I had the confidence behind the, seeing the results. My oldest daughter has three of my grandchildren. She's an amazing mother. Her and her husband have taken my class twice. (laughs) Nice. Nice. (laughs) And, you know, it took a while for her to be able to, her bandwidth was small with with the first, after the first two, she was so exhausted. Mm-hmm. that she didn't have a lot of time. But once she started struggling with behavior, she's like, okay, tell me what we're supposed to do. We're going to take your class. <laughs> like, And then my middle daughter who doesn't have kids yet, but she was a nanny for a long time. She would call me all the time and mom, they're doing this. What do I do? And then my son who has two kids, I was coaching he and his wife. And so that's when I truly got confidence that sure. this yeah. worked, like that they're yeah. actually you know, and they're, they are amazing. They're all amazing with kids. They're just amazing with kids. And I can definitely see the, that result of breaking the cycle and the chain of dysfunction and violence. Not that I was perfect y'all. I had my moments and my kids will even tell you there's moments. So it's, it's not about perfection, but it's about breaking cycles, improving and, Mm -hmm. and being willing and open to learning and, and being okay with the mistakes that I made, but also feeling like I did my best. I did the best that I could. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, that is, um, I think that is a huge testimony because, you know, coming from an abusive relationship, number one, getting out of an abusive relationship and even getting to the shelter was a huge accomplishment because there are unfortunately many, many, many families who don't ever get to that point where they can get out of the situation and then it ends up being, you know, deleterious to the children in the long run and sometimes can be fatal to members of the family. So, you know, I am just so glad to hear that you're able to get out of that and then to, to thrive, you know, afterwards. Um, And then there's a huge testament to you and your wherewithal because you, I mean, I'm sure that when you're in the shelter, you didn't have like infinite amount of financial resources, right? Like I'm sure you didn't have that or else you wouldn't be in a shelter. Right. And so most people who are coming out of a domestic violence situation that I've seen, and I'm by no means an expert, but from what I've seen, it's been a situation where the person who is the abuser is usually the person that has control of the finances. And they have also isolated that, person who's being abused from their family and their support system. So it's not like you could just be like, oh uh, yeah, I'm just going to leave. It's usually not as simple as just leaving. Usually it's, you have to actually plan that thing, or you have to figure out how you're going to do it where you don't endanger yourself. You don't endanger your children. And you're going to be able to see your way once you are out of the situation. So it's, I mean, there are a lot of things that you overcame to even get to the shelter, uh, I'm sure. Um, you didn't have to say it because I, I could yeah. tell. And then the other thing is, um, you know, from there, from getting from the shelter to back on your feet, that's another huge accomplishment, right? Because you're doing it not just for you, but you're doing it for three individuals as well, right? And they're de- totally dependent on you. And so to see now where, you know, you've had a thriving business for all these years. And then you are able to actually help them with their families or with their work as you know, with your daughter, who's a nanny. And, you know, just to see that you're able to pay it forward in a positive way is is absolutely amazing. And I hope, I mean, I hope that there isn't anybody listening who is in a situation where they are being abused, but if there is, I hope that this, is this testimony will be something that will encourage you to realize that number one, you are not alone. There is support out there for you. There is hope for you and you can absolutely do better than your current situation because nobody deserves or nobody should be abused. Like that is just not, not what is expected. And so hopefully you will find a way out safely for yourself and for your children and that you will also learn to to thrive figure out your way of thriving because you definitely can do it 
So, yeah. So sorry. I was on a little soapbox there, but I had to say it because I mean, I just so much respect for you because it's like, it is a very difficult thing. And I know that it's difficult. It's hugely difficult. And I'm, yeah. yeah, And I'm here. I mean, like for, I, I mean, I, I have most people like myself, when you're, when you go through things, you just become an attractant for those things. So I'll be in the grocery store <laughs> and somebody will randomly talk to me about either domestic violence or parenting. It could go either oh, okay, way. Okay. Gotcha. You know, it's like that. I just, yes. And I'm, I'm always, it's just always in my life because I've been there and I am able to, to help and to support and to also know because of my situation, it took me three trips to the shelter. I mean, I didn't give you the entire story, but it was, we were in three times over an eight month period before I actually got out. And it was due to exactly what you were speaking to the finances. It's impossible when that person is controlling everything and you have three small children. I had three small children. I had no way to support us and then to fight legal battles. The courts at the time didn't see it connected. So fathers often, and he got half custody of those kids, even oh, as we're navigating this. So it was yeah. a mess. It was an absolute mess. And I did the best I could. And I had support. I had, you know, church, I had friends. I had, I did get work. I was able to get a job as, as I was getting out, I had subsidized childcare or I never could have gotten a job because the job didn't pay as much as childcare cost. And, you know, I was able to, to get out and, and to stay out after a period of time. And I think that's what people have to know, both those of us that are supporting people that we see to know that the person is doing as good as they can, because it's hard to get out and to just keep supporting them and not, you know, we all get frustrated when they keep going back and keep going back, but it's hard. It's hard. It's hard to leave. You have to have like you, exactly what you said, a plan. And I, I'm a, you know, like I'm a straight A student. So I wanted to do this the first time. <laughs> and, even, and even for me, it took me three, three trips through the shelter before I actually got that plan together solid enough to get out. So yes, if you're listening, there is hope and there's such a better life after and you deserve so much better than that. And so do your kids. And that was one of the things that really pushed me. I don't even remember which of the times uh, because we would have, the cops would be out at our house constantly and oh my gosh um, because neighbors one time we had 11 neighbors call because we're yelling and fighting and people are scared for the kids and I had a, a female police officer who came up and she got in my face I'm the one getting abused right she gets in my face and she's like if we get called out here again I'm calling CPS and getting these kids taken away from you and that's when I was like okay I can't keep doing this because my kids right I can't stay in this because my kids and so getting out for me a lot initially was to for my kids. Like, I can't keep putting them through this. I can't, I don't want to lose them because of this. And it's not, it's not worth it. And so I, I, you know, I don't remember her name or anything. I wish I could thank her now, but I was super, super mad at her. At of course. <laughs> like what? Why are you coming to me with that? Like, that's right? not, it's not I'm my victim fault. Here. Right. Exactly. <laughs> oh, wow. That's so interesting. Like you never know what, who is going to be the person that's going to impact your direction? You know, like you never know that it's sometimes it's not like a positive thing that they say to you. Uh, sometimes it's actually a negative thing. Like that was pretty negative, you know, yes, and was. that's, that was what you needed <laughs> to hear at that time to push you in the direction you need to go, which is absolutely amazing. Yeah. So, wow. Wow. So thank you, police officer, whoever you are. (laughs) That's right. And I, you know, and I think this also speak to what you said about domestic violence and the statistics are, are not good that so many women are, are killed by their intimate partners. And I knew that at the time. And I know I survived many moments where he could have killed me. And I was super lucky that once we got through all of this, I, he actually, after I had left and we were still having to exchange the kids and stuff. At one point he kicked me and I called the police. And at the time they had just changed the laws because of OJ Simpson and all that right, stuff that right. had been going down. And no longer did a woman have to press charges because that was the reason that, that this was always going on. Cause the women would always re- recant because right. 
Yeah. Uh, the consequences, I mean, yeah. <laughs> right. And so it, it, the law had just changed where if a person, if, if they left a mark on you, the cops could press charges and it took it out of your hands. Well, he left this little, it was a little tiny nothing mark. I mean, physically, it really wasn't much. And, but it was enough that the cops arrested him. And he did like three weeks of work furlough or something like that. And I was so lucky because he did not like going to jail. And that was the turning point where he decided to stop his part in this because okay. he didn't, he didn't want to end up in jail. And so the, the physical violence and threats stopped. Now he was, it was always difficult to ha- manage, you know, for five or 10 years, the, the exchange with the kids, but sure. he was no longer a threat to me. And okay. I feel like I live every day still really in gratitude that I'm alive. I mean, because of all those moments of really fearing for my life that, um, that that's one of the things that keeps me in my mode of life. Right. It's like, right. I could be dead right now. So easily, so easily the number, you know, the numbers are just what they are for domestic violence. It's just, it's just horrific. And so every day I'm grateful to be alive. So I just, you know, how can I not smile and do my best and show up? Wow. Wow. Yeah, no, that's, uh, that's extremely powerful because yeah, no, you're right. I mean, there's a a huge amount of gratitude for the chance to be around to be, you know, see, watch your children grow up and watch your grandkids. And, you know, so that is a huge blessing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Wow. And so, you know, this is like, um, so thank you for opening up about that. Cause I know that's not always easy to just talk about that kind of thing. Um, so I appreciate you for being vulnerable and opening up about that. And cause I know that it's going to help somebody. I absolutely am positively sure that it will. Um, there's always somebody listening who needs to hear exactly what is being said. So, um, I appreciate you for that. You know, so you have, you know, such an incredible story. You have made a huge difference in not only the lives of the three individuals that you've been responsible for, but you've also made a huge difference in the lives of many people around the world. And so we we saw that as evidence with, you know, what happened last year when you were able to expand your reach um, on a more regular basis through the Zoom calls. Um, So tell us, how can we get in contact with you if we're interested in, for example, the virtual classes or the programs you offer, or we were looking to hire you for, you know, our institutions or groups or whatever, um, let us know and please spell it out. It's just in case somebody's not looking directly at the show notes. Okay. So it's positiveparenting.com and that's P O S. I T I V E P A R E N T I N G dot com. Perfect. Perfect. Mm-hmm. Okay. Awesome. All my contact info is there. Awesome. 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 <clears throat> this has been such a fantastic conversation. Um, I feel privileged and honored to have be a part of it. So thank you so much. You know, we are at that place in the show. Cause you know, we're kind of, a, and it's kind of funny because like you, you've had your coffee cup or your tea cup, which I think is fantastic because yeah. I always tell people like, I really want this show to be like, we were just hanging out at the local coffee or tea shop and we're just chatting. And then, you know, fear happens to come up. We talk about how we face it. Right. And, um, we should share our stories. Right. So I feel like this has been the epitome of what I love the show to be. And so thank you for that. I'll just put that out there. Yes, and you're welcome. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) And then, so we, at the end of the show, this is what we usually do. We have our tradition and that tradition is filling in the blanks. So Deb, are you ready for the fill in the blanks? Of course. (laughs) Okay. Fantastic. Great, 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 great. great. I always ask permission because I'll never know. All right. So here we go. (laughs) The first one is if I am fearless, I will. Just keep going forward. I won't, you know, I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. Awesome. Awesome. The next one is to me, fearless freedom means. Ah, getting to do everything I want. Traveling. (laughs) Yes. Traveling. That's what I love to do. (laughs) Oh, cool. I love traveling too. Goodness. We're like twinning in that department. There you go. (laughs) (laughs) 
Awesome. And then the third one is my battle cry is happy parenting. <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. And just a reminder, tribe, you guys can reach out to Deb at positiveparenting.com, right? So that's right. Definitely do that because um, we can always use assistance with parenting. Trust me, trust me, trust me. Trust me. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's always a challenge, I'll tell you. And I, as you said, three, I was like, yeah, we have three as well. Oh, and very we good. Had, we, yeah, we have them. They're very closely uh, in, they're close in age because I was literally pregnant or breastfeeding for like four years straight, like literally, I yep. feel that way. So, yep. yeah. It is what it is. Well, I do. I do have a, po- a positive parenting pep talks podcast. It's just three to five minutes a day, so it's very quick. Oh, nice. Just yes. So everybody and is, that is that to... on is that on um, Amazon Alexa or is that um, on um, all the podcasting all the podcast portals. things? Okay, yes, all the cool, podcast cool. portals. Positive and it's, and it's called pep positive parenting. Oh, perfect, perfect. Yeah, positive yeah. So look out for that. Yes. Yeah. Positive parenting pep talks. Love it. That's it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much for being on the show. We enjoyed it. And thank you so much for having me. It was fabulous. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes.